So, I mean, it's, it's amazing that we are actually having a conversation on food, which is actually a basic need for human civilization after all the evolution which you have actually gone through. Still, it's actually a matter of uh, several questions, perceptions, and uh, we are still searching for a way forward. And I think in, in that particular journey, I think uh, as we actually sort of delve into more questions, it's also important that we find a few answers along the way. So what I'm actually going to share with all of you is uh, one such quest to find some answer through a project which uh, Care India had implemented uh, a few years back uh, in the state of Odisha. And uh, just by way of introduction about Care India, like uh, we are a development organization. Uh, we have been in this country for about 65 years now. Uh, we work on several sectors, uh, very specifically on agriculture, our focus is on the smallholders and uh, empowering women and girls is at the center of the work which we do. And uh, I'm glad to hear that um, uh, Father Ajastin and uh, Dean uh, Mishra actually really highlighted the need to focus on the marginalized as we look at uh, solutions for food systems. So uh, I'm specifically, I think I really here saying that I'm going to specifically look at women and thanks to who for setting this larger context. Uh, that gives us a good opportunity to be much more focused on the most neglected uh, segment or population when we speak about food systems, which is women. Uh, so the, the basic question is, drawing from the title, are we actually talking about women and food systems, or is it about women in food systems? Uh, we all know about the whole debate about women and development and women in development in a sense, which was raging in the, in the 80s and the early 90s. So I think as we uh, discuss more about the food systems and then the nutrition systems as well, it's very, very important that we understand about these the linkages in terms of women and the food systems. Uh, the reason why the, the lean part is very important is uh, it, it's important that uh, we actually start recognizing the role of women in food systems first. Uh, we have been doing work on agriculture in different uh, socio-cultural contexts across the country. Uh, some of those points which, uh, which you see here are the ones which come predominantly in, in all the areas. So issues are about the rural participation of women. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it could be as high as asking whether women own land or to ask whether the extension workers go and meet women or, or who are the extension workers and, and such questions in that sense. It's also about the skill and capacities of women. And we all know that uh, the, the environment is changing, the markets are changing. The, there are new factors like climate change which are coming in. And there are also a lot of economical factors which you are actually looking at. The whole uh, discourse about feminization of agriculture and Odisha incidentally happens to be a state uh, with uh, high levels of out-migration, uh, which naturally sort of has an, has an implication in terms of the need to relook at uh, when men migrate, what happens to the farm, what happens to the household, and who takes decisions, and do women have the required skills and capacities, not necessarily to manage the farm within their own locality, but then even to engage with the market, be it the local market or be it the, the, the larger markets or the terminal markets. Then there are issues around uh, the priorities and preferences, uh, which crop should be grown, why should we be growing such a crop? Who decides that? And uh, what role do women actually have in actually sort of being part of the decision making and also influencing the decision making? Just to give you an example in terms of how the priorities and preferences play out. Again, uh, like uh, there are deeper issues like intra-household food disparity. When the food is actually on the on inside the house, then what happens to the food? Who gets to eat first? or last, or who gets to eat what. These are basic questions in which we need to sort of look into when we are talking about women in the food system. Access and control is something which is very straightforward. There are, I mean, agriculture obviously is dependent on 
access to so many things, it's about the extension, it's about imports, it's about output market. Do women have access and control? Where do they stand with respect to the, the value chains, the agriculture value chains? And uh, it's, it's sort of a common place now to actually sort of say that women tend to congregate. It's not that far, of course, but that women tend to congregate in the production segment of the value chain. I mean, whichever value chain we take, we actually sort of un we pop populate or, or we sort of plot in terms of where women actually sort of tend to concentrate. It's always at the production segment. And the last bit, uh, which Dean Mishra also spoke about in terms of the policy response, I think policy response is still very, very critical. And the point which Prabhu highlighted in terms of in terms of the need to actually look beyond the staples is, is a clear example in terms of how policy important is very important. And any policy response has to keep women at the center of their own thinking. I mean, why so much? I mean, I mean, we all know that uh, even globally, the statistics says that women tend to actually sort of play the most, I mean, in terms of the number of tasks or actions which go into making the agriculture produce, women tend to play a major role. Even beyond the produce, in terms of post-harvest handling, women tend to play a major role. Then it stops at the market or at the market, but then I think it's very important that we recognize this as we move forward. With this sort of a framing, uh, I would actually sort of uh, take you to, through the journey of pathways. Uh, this is a project which we actually did uh, in uh, one of or, or, the, or part of the KVK state, districts, I would say, the districts of Kalahandi and Kalamar. Uh, it was it was implemented over a period of uh, six years, and uh, the larger goal was to uh, increase the productivity and empowerment of women. Uh, the the key assumption was that we can't increase the productivity without empowering women. So so there was a lot of effort in the project, which was deliberately and intentionally focused on empowering women. In terms of uh, the type of women we were working with, they all came from the small holding family and uh, low income groups. And uh, the project actually reached about 13,000 women farmers from the small holder households during this uh, period. I also want to, uh, before I, I, I share uh, some of the some of the uh, reflections from pathways i'd also like to uh, put that in context uh, by actually highlighting some of the changes which we were able to see in the areas where we were working with uh, i know it's it's a lot of data but then i'm i'm just wanting to highlight a few aspects over here if you see in terms of the farm income which is actually a, a point of discourse and discussion at this point in time in this country in terms of doubling the farm income and uh, how do we actually do that. In part ways we saw that uh, in terms of farm income there was a there was a significant increase and these these stars actually sort of uh, talk about the statistical significance of, of the data wherever there are three stars. So uh, we saw that while uh, in general the income levels were in the uh, increasing at a, at, a, at a pace, but then we, in fact it actually came down. We saw that the farm income actually sort of went up in these uh, communities. Uh, crop diversity is something which uh, Prabhupada also highlighted. So uh, here again what we saw was, uh, it's not necessarily about production, it's also about collecting uh, farm uh, produce, and it's also not necessarily uh, uh, direct food produce uh, like for something uh, things like mahua flower which actually sort of contributes to the income and thereby to the uh, to the larger sort of strengthening of the food systems is what we were looking at so generally what we observed was that uh, between uh, the VL stands for the baseline and the EL for the end line so what we saw between the baseline and the end line I mean essentially over six period six year period of time was that uh, there were sort of a significant movement across several sort of a crops in a, in a sense. Um, so you know, part of this was also uh, uh, due to the, the work which we were actually able to do in terms of the women's empowerment and working with the collectives to actually sort of bring in the importance of the various crops and, and collecting for food and also for sale of uh, these crops. 
Dry tea dry waste is, is another uh, significant area when we actually speak about uh, the food systems. Uh, here again, uh, you, you will actually see that uh, in terms of the uh, dry tea dry waste score, which is a composite score, there was a significant movement uh, in, in all the households and, and we also see that uh, the same thing happened in the, in the accumulated households, which is, which is this part. Uh, we also saw uh, in terms of intra-household food access, uh, there, was a, there was a significant uh, sort of uh, shift. And this was, uh, this was again uh, uh, something which was deliberately taken up by the projects. I, I don't have the time to go into sort of uh, how we did that, but then there, were, there, were, there was a lot of effort to actually sort of uh, have dialogue on, on areas like uh, household food distribution, workload sharing, uh, decision making, so which actually sort of had a compounding effect in terms of uh, in terms of areas like household food distribution. Women's empowerment. This again is a composite score. Uh, this is something uh, which many of you will be familiar with. Here again, uh, uh, I mean, at a high level, it talks about women's engagement across five parameters, including including decision making. So we see that uh, there was a there was a significant movement here as well. Uh, in terms of uh, women actually sort of achieving uh, empowerment across across various domains, you will also note that uh, in terms of the female head households, uh, it was it was much significant when it came to the uh, male headed households. Again, that actually sort of uh, points back to the uh, to the sort of or rather throws back a challenge to us in terms of uh, how do we not necessarily in terms of how do we actually sort of achieve women's empowerment in what duration and longevity can is this possible? So I think what pathways actually sort of uh, indicated was when when we are talking about uh, female-headed households, probably it's much more easier, relatively easier. But then when you are talking about shifting gender patterns in male-headed households, it's going to take much longer time. But then the encouraging sign is about uh, some initial movement over there. Again, in terms of household coping strategies, uh, uh, this is something which is a which is an interesting set of data because uh, you will see that uh, the, the coping index, again, the composite index, has shifted between the basement and the inline. But then, what is also in, uh, interesting was uh, the various coping strategies which the households actually sort of adopted when there was a scarcity of food. And incidentally, across these five to six years, which uh, pathways was implemented. There was a season of drought. There were a couple of seasons of flood, and so th there. I mean, it's not necessarily a sort of a, a, an even season uh, over the past five to over the past five to six years. So, the the coping strategies from that perspective is something very very significant for us to understand as we actually look at the food systems, and also how we actually want to strengthen the food systems uh, in, in in an environment like Odisha, where where which is actually going to be prone to floods if we go by some of the climate change data which we get to see. Um, so, so I just want to sort of uh, shift gears and then speak a little bit about uh, the uh, some details about the food system, what we actually got to know from pathways again. So here broadly, I would like to sort of uh, uh, speak about uh, what, what generally is termed as uh, three uh, big subsystems of the, of, of the system. So just to try to unpack that. So uh, I think it's, it's, it's important that we actually sort of shift the conversation and rather balance the conversation and not necessarily stay focused only on production when we are talking about food system, but then also talk about distribution and consumption. And, uh, and, uh, and Prabhu had highlighted about uh, the safety say, the safety nets and, and whatever social, social security measures which the government is undertaking. So I think uh, it's, it's important that uh, when we are actually looking at the food systems, uh, we, we run the policy response to food system. It's, it's important that we actually sort of not look into all the three segments and also look at how all these three subsystems actually have a bearing on, on women per se. So uh, to go back to, uh, to pathways and on what we actually sort of got to understand, uh, or rather, sort of to put it in other words, what was uh, what was possible and what what actually made this shift happen, whatever we saw as an impact, 
one of the key areas which we believe contributed to that type of an impact is the extinction service. And we all know uh, that how crucial and critical uh, the extinction service is. And uh, especially when you're talking about women, uh, the, the lack of and uh, the lack of uh, access and the lack of quality extension services has a significant bearing on women, especially if you juxtapose that with, uh, with the increased role which women are actually tending to take in agriculture because of migration and feminization, which is, which is, lay, uh, which is coming from there. These are very critical aspects if we have to sort of really sort of bring in women into the fold of the food systems and help women to actually play a bigger role, which is which is certainly possible uh, from a food systems perspective. Get extension services to the communities. But the challenge is how do we do it more consistently? How do we do it on a more sustainable basis? So what sort of uh, extension system will actually sort of result in, in sustainable and consistent flow of uh, extension services to women is going to be very important. In a sense, I think it's important that we, we reimagine the extension services and uh, look at extension services more from an equity lens and then ensure that women are at the center of the extension services. Uh, not to go too much into the data point, uh, uh, just wanted to highlight that uh, if we are able to sort of plug in this last minute connectivity, and if we are actually making extension services really accessible to women, then you can, we can actually see something as significant as this in terms of women themselves accessing the extension services. So it's not necessarily a factor of demand, but then I think it's a factor of supply here, which is, which is a big missing piece when it comes to the extension services. Uh, moving on to the agriculture inputs, uh, again, uh, here in terms of uh, seeds, uh, fertilizers, and all sorts of inputs, the last mile connectivity is again a major issue. Uh, there are extension services, but then the, uh, there are input service providers, but then the input service providers again uh, play a significant role in, in defining the food systems itself, but also defining the shift from food crops to other crops. I mean, we have seen in, in currently how uh, uh, the cotton cultivation has actually grown phenomenally uh, from from uh, food crops in that sense. Uh, timeliness of uh, agriculture inputs is again a, a major issue. And I mean, given the seasonality, one of the things which we got to understand from farmers and especially women farmers who have constraints on mobility as well is in terms of how do you actually get the right inputs in the right, the right time at the doorstep. Right? Uh, so, so that's that's something which we need to sort of uh, look into. Trust of quality and pricing is again a, a major issue. I mean, I mean, affordability is a, is a major concern when we are talking about uh, uh, this uh, income group. So, what we what we found in Pathways was that uh, when we actually sort of uh, created a set of input providers, or when we were able to sort of uh, downstream the input providers and their linkages with the with the women farmers, we saw that there was significant improvement in access. Also, to just point out that distance was a major factor there. If we were to sort of look at the women and uh, uh, the food systems and sort of really looking at the improving their sort of a participation and contribution to the food systems, it's going to be very important for us to understand where do we actually peg the input provision. And it's very important that we actually sort of take it to the doorstep. Uh, finance, agriculture finance is a major uh, uh, concern uh, in the country, uh, despite uh, whatever is happening with uh, with microfinance and, uh, and the development of the self help groups. So again, uh, here the USA is on these self help groups. We found that when we were actually looking at the income sources, it was largely coming from their from their own source. That again uh, limits their ability to invest. Or, or again, talk about the capital investment in, the, in agriculture, and thereby sort of uh, food systems, uh, improving the food systems in that sense. It's important to sort of, uh, that there are pointers here where, which actually say that we need to sort of not limit our thinking to self-help groups and the finance which is actually being offered there, but then sort of uh, look at uh, other opportunities. Again, the financial system in this country is changing with, with uh, small banks and payment banks coming in. Uh, it's early days, but then uh, that, that again is an opportunity for us to sort of uh, uh, shift uh, things here. Uh, uh, just a set of uh, 
key uh, sort of pointers which came from uh, the, the pathways as well. Uh, uh, I mean, generally, development organizations tend to do it, uh, given the community-focused work in terms of focusing on the demand side and not, and not necessarily on the supply side. Uh, pathways was trying to do both, and then it, it was sort of very clear that it's very important for us to actually sort of focus on, on both, the, both the segments. And it's especially when we are talking about the tribal communities, there are a uh, lot of uh, myths and misconceptions when it comes to the service providers uh, in terms of uh, their, their thinking and um, their ability to provide services to the to these communities. And of course, there are genuine challenges in terms of the transaction and the opportunity cost which the service providers also have. So here, I think it's important to sort of look at uh, aggregation of demand. So, so collectivization here could be a, a significant step, uh, which could be a meeting ground and beneficial for, for both the demand and the supply side. Uh, Tragedy is something which is closely associated with women farmers, not to say that uh, women aren't involved in tragedy uh, sort of oriented activities, but then more so women when it comes to uh, the farm work, the, the household work, child care, and, and all the, I mean, the, the long list which we, which we all know about. So I think it's important to sort of look at uh, the drudgery reduction. This is a domain which has been there uh, for quite a while, but then like, uh, uh, and, and, and there are experts sitting here. Uh, so it's, it's important to actually sort of uh, look at uh, drudgery reduction tools, not as uh, a big implements or, or, or big machinery, but then something which is actually very key and which is very important from women's perspective, when we are, especially when we are talking about the small holders. Uh, participation and representation of women in institutions. Uh, of course, we know that uh, uh, despite uh, despite all the challenges as a country, we have we have moved far in terms of promoting those institutions, which are very important. Uh, these are community-based institutions, and th there are also institutions which are engaged in planning, participatory planning. But what's what's lack what's lacking is in terms of women's participation in these institutions. Thereby, their own priorities and preferences are not getting foregrounded in these institutions. Uh, thinking about food systems in, in Odisha particularly, I mean, the, the conversation will be incomplete if we are not accounting for the forest resources in that sense. Of course, the forest resources are receding, but then despite that, we know that they actually play a very significant role. And since uh, Pathways worked in two districts, Kandamal and Kalangi, we found this to be much more prominent uh, in Kandamal. Uh, compared to uh, Kalakandi. So I think uh, that's something which is relevant for several uh, districts in Odisha. So, and, and also particularly given the role of women in forest collection, uh, uh, I mean, with the food of fuel, it's important to actually bring this as part of the uh, food systems dialogue. Uh, I also spoke about the, the, the coping strategies and the climate change. This is something which we can't ignore. Um, Moving on, like uh, in terms of uh, price, I think uh, this is one of the key learning of uh, for Pathways itself in terms of how do we actually sort of make the markets work for women. So uh, we looked at uh, collective bargaining as, as a way to do that. And here, uh, the, the central groups were harnessed, producer groups are formed, which actually uh, really sort of uh, made a big difference in certain areas like maize, and uh, and Mahua, where we were actually able to see a real sort of a coming in of the collective bargaining uh, of uh, of uh, the women with the traders. Of course, there were a lot of uh, uh, instances where they nearly came into conflict. But then, like uh, given that it was a collective effort, women were able to sort of manage it and and uh, bargain for better prices. Uh, last but not least, uh, while we are talking about physical investments, it's also important to actually look at social investments. Uh, to actually sort of uh, improve the uh, food systems and women's participation there. Uh, going on to the social cultural aspects, uh, as as pathways also so focusing on women's empowerment, which was very uh, key to our understanding about the agriculture systems and the food systems. Uh, we we saw that there were there were changes in terms of uh, in terms of men's perception. Of, of women and also women's own perception of what is global and what is not global. So we are talking about the social norms. So what path is also sort of evidenced is that there are perceptions which we can shift over over, over a period of time, but then it's going to take it's going, it's a long haul. So you, we can't actually sort of shift it in a shorter duration. 
But then the challenge is in terms of how do we stay invested in, in something like that. So it's, it's not necessarily uh, uh, about the methodologies and tools of, uh, to actually shift the gender relations, or rather transform the gender relations. But then it's, it's all about really recognizing women's social position and also sort of taking or uh, elevating the conversation uh, to the level that whatever schemes and policies which are being framed is actually not necessarily gender sensitive, but then it should be gender transformative in their sense. A part of that is also about engaging with men. I mean, we believe that it's, I mean, you, you don't actually sort of empower women or you don't actually transform gender relations only by working with women. So it's equally important to work with men. And that again was evidenced in pathways in terms of uh, the, the space and, and the appreciation which men had in certain instances. But of course, when it came to issues like control of income, there's a long distance to go. So I, this, this finally leads to a few questions. And I'm just sort of going to pose a set of questions and then uh, uh, leave it to uh, the experts to actually uh, sort of ponder over these. I think a primary question is about the gender norms, as we were discussing. It's, it's important that decision making and access and control are actually seen as very important ones. So, so how do we actually do that? That actually sort of calls for rethinking in terms of how we actually look at women in food systems. And even ICDs is a classic example where we actually sort of see women as receivers of food rather than as actually uh, as as women who are actually playing a significant contribution to the food systems as such social structures again are, are very critical so uh, i mean like uh, any any role which women can play in the food systems is not in a neutral plane it's actually sort of going to be a process where they negotiate the social structures then as as agencies and as as catalysts how do we actually sort of uh, facilitate, uh, how do we first of all engage with the social structures and how do we actually facilitate changes in the social structures? Here again, uh, probably it's important to actually sort of look at uh, solidarity building and collectivization. Uh, markets is another big area which we actually have to look at. Uh, uh, I mean, markets is not, market is not a monolith and we also know that the markets are actually evolving very rapidly. With, with certain parts of reforms which are setting in, and newer actually forms of markets which are coming in. So, how do you look at markets is something very important. And uh, the final point is about the natural resource management. Uh, so, so here again, role of women is going to be very cent very central, and uh, and uh, it's important that we actually go look at women as receivers of uh, of uh, say a uh, produced food or or consumers of food, but then it's important that we actually recognize their, their role and participation access and control over the natural resources. But I think that's the last point which I have, and uh, with that I would thank you all for patiently hearing our experience. And I look forward to a very engaged conversation and debate as we move forward uh, on some of those uh, questions and pointers which uh, I was able to share with you. Thank you all again.